I'm Laura. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. And we are The Sufficient Seven. And this is going to be our review of A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Moss. Um, we're going to say a little bit about our thoughts without spoilers, but we can't say much because it is the second book in a series. Mm -hmm. So after we explain our just general thoughts about the book, we're going to give a very long and detailed spoiler review. So it is going to be a long video. We already know that. So just stop before it gets to the spoiler part because you don't want to be spoiled for this book because no, it's so no. wonderful and you should all go home and read it. Yes. This video can be summed up in two words and that's read it. Mm -hmm. It being A Court of Mist and Fury because it's so good. This is the second book in um, the Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas and it is really good. The first book is at the beginning a loose Beauty and the Beast retelling mm -hmm. and in the last 100 pages or so the plot diverts from that and goes off on its own thread and that's where this book picks up and we both really enjoyed the first book. We read it last year and this book just came out a couple of weeks ago and we both read it really quickly and loved it and yeah. cried with joy. Yes, it was so <laughs> This is good. one of those books that you just can't stop thinking about it. You just have to reread it again, which is what we're going to do. Yeah, <laughs> we're both rereading the first book and then we're going to mm -hmm. reread this one. It's definitely been like bumped up to yeah. all time favorite books. Yeah. <laughs> No, this is one of those books where I just start thinking about it and I start to tear up yeah. because it makes me so happy. It's so, so good. good. <laughs> I like, I don't even know how to express, I'm tearing up, I don't even know how to express myself other than like, it's so good and then the tears come. Yeah. Don't read the last page before because it does not make sense unless you read the whole last chapter, which I guess I, also, <laughs> I did. I also did because I had to know. Yeah. But yeah, if you just read like even the last sentence of the book, don't, don't do it. Yeah, I feel like that's like tempting them, but that's no. true. Don't be tempted by our words. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a wonderful book and I highly recommend it. It's all we can really say without spoiling anything. So you guys should pick up the first book in this series. This is A Court of Thorns and Roses. It's the first book. It was really good. So you should get this and read it. And then you can get this and read it. And then you can come back and comment about how much you love this book because I know you will. Now we're going to delve into some spoilers. So if you haven't read this, you should leave because it's really good. Yeah. And you don't want to be spoiled. So goodbye to anyone who's leaving. And hello to the people who have read this book. It's, I don't even know where we're going to begin. It's just, oh, Reese. Reese. He's my love. <laughs> so like, okay, uh, even, okay, this is one of those times that even from the first book, as soon as he showed up, I was like, he is the one. I was like, this is, this is the one who I love <laughs> the most. <laughs> I was definitely a non-believer. I was like, no, Tamlin forever. But reading 20 pages into this book, Laura kind of spoiled me a little bit along the way, but after the first 20 pages, I was like, no, Tamlin, you were making decisions for her when she should be able to make her own yeah. choice and like I hate that that's like one of those tropes that I cannot yeah. stand and so Tamlin no he was right nope. out the door uh -uh. <laughs> bye <laughs> basically yeah. you're not gonna let me decide for myself and you're not gonna be in my life the book starts off when Farah is kind of going through some PTSD after her time spent under the mountain and at the, at the very beginning I was really confused because she has this horrible nightmare she's woken up she's like thrown up and then she mentions that Tamlin is pretending to be asleep on the bed, ignoring her. That was the first red flag. And yeah. I was like, whoa. Like, what? Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, and then she was like, well, he's suffering too. And I was like, yes, but you're both just suffering alone together. This yeah. makes no sense. Like they are completely avoiding having to deal with it. And I don't mm -hmm. know who like is suffering worse. Favor was a human who had to kill other fairies. And mm -hmm. just like the stuff that she went and through. she was tortured. Yeah, she was tortured. Like she almost mm -hmm. died until Reese saved her. <laughs> yeah. Had and to be like drugged and humiliated every night. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just so awful. And like the fact that they're, one, they're both ignoring it. But Tamlin's been alive a lot longer than Farah has. So mm -hmm. Farah's going to ignore it. Like maybe it's just like a young sort of thing. But Tamlin also, should know. Yeah. Also, she's adjusting to a new immortal body. Yeah. Like a new being. Like she mentioned she like picked up a fork within one of the first days she got back and just like crushed it because yeah. she she doesn't know like she's yeah. in an immortal body and Tamlin's just ignoring her and all he wants to do is have sex with her like he won't talk to her it's horrible when I found out that they were getting married I was like whoa, whoa, whoa. like you're getting married three months 
or no, I think it's like three months after the whole ordeal under the mountain, he proposes, and I was like, three months is all you're giving each other yeah. to heal from this? That's yeah. not how this works. No, and I really liked, we talked a little bit about how the wedding is placed in such a way that it just seems wrong, mm -hmm. and it really kind of fits into Feyre's mindset to just kind of throw in the fact that there is a wedding so early in the book. It really kind of jolts the reader, and I think that it's re reflecting how Feyre feels about the whole thing as well, how she's just not ready for it. It's just thrown in there, and you're like, whoa, you're getting married? Yeah. But yeah. And she also like hates everything about this. She's not getting to make any decisions about the wedding. She hates her dress. She's being dressed in like frilly, girly clothes a lot too, which you can tell she doesn't like. And since we were just rereading the beginning of Akatar, we're gonna go by the acronyms Akatar and Akamath. Yeah, because so, it's, it's too long. Yeah, Akatar, Akatar is the first one and Akamath is the second one. So in Akatar, at the very beginning when she comes to court, they try to get her to wear a dress. And she's like, no, I want to wear my pants and tunic. And after some struggle, she's able to wear her pants. But it was just so weird at the beginning of this. You can tell that she doesn't like the dresses that she's in. Yeah, and like Tamlin all. should know that she'd rather be wearing pants and a tunic. Also Tamlin, she really likes to paint. And Tamlin is just like, oh, let me give you some paint colors and it'll make it all better. Yeah. And it's like, okay, she can't even see the color red without freaking out and thinking about like the red of Amarantha's hair or all of the like blood that was there and horrible things. I knew that Reese was gonna come in during the wedding. So and, and she was like, help me, like save me, like this is so horrible. And then he showed up and I was like, yeah. And he says like the, he says, hello Feyre, darling. Yeah. And like that phrase now is just uh yeah. It's so good. No, it was so good. And then it was so funny because Tim was like, you're not taking her now. And I was like, yes, take her now. Take her now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. feel like at that point I was totally rooting for Reese because I was like, no. Like, Tamlin, you're just... Like, at the very beginning, I feel like there were some, like, shreds of hope for Tamlin. Mm -hmm. But later on, just no. Once Reese gets her, he's like, oh my gosh, like, you're so malnourished. Like, you, as the reader, haven't really known at this point how horrible she looks but she's like sleeping the day away because she's up all night with nightmares. She's not eating. She's just l wasting away. And this existence at the spring court is so horrible for her. And then she gets to the night court and the way she describes <laughs> it is just so beautiful. So wonderful. And then just seeing the actual court, you're just like, oh, this is great. And then you rent her out for it and you're like, this is even better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and when she gets there too, she has this huge airy room to herself and because the stars are so bright and there's these huge open windows, she can sleep because she doesn't feel like she's being compressed and like in her little cage under the mountain and it's so wonderful. And then Reese starts to teach her how to read, which is awesome. And the things, the things that he has her say. Oh, so funny. Like, Rhysand is the most wonderful high lord. He's the most, like he keeps changing the adjectives for her. Yeah. And they're just like compliments about himself and it's really funny. Rhysand is the most <laughs> handsome high lord. He's the most delightful high lord, the most cunning high lord, which is true. True, yeah. True, all true. So he only has her for a week before she has to go back to Tamlin. And then once she goes back, it's just as bad and they're not getting along. Yeah, I think that's also when she tells him like, I don't want to get married now. And I don't even think she said like, it's not like we're never going to get married. Just like right now I'm not ready. And he just like, it literally explodes the study and like all the paint materials that he just bought for her. It literally just exploded. <laughs> I was like, oh no. And she would have been seriously injured if she hadn't like, like somehow subconsciously like shielded herself. Yeah. Like he could have really hurt her. Yeah. I feel like the end of this book enraged me so much with Tamlin that even thinking back now, I'm just like, I hate you so much. <laughs> the tithe. <laughs> Basically, Tamlin taxes uh, all the citizens, I guess, of the spring court. Basically, if they can't pay, they get like three days to pay or they'd owe the court more money. But like, it's ridiculous. Like, they've all been under Amarantha's rule for so long. They don't they're have, all poor. Like, yeah, they're all poor. They don't have the money. They don't have the resources. They can't even feed themselves. And Tamlin's just expecting them to give him everything that they're supposed to be taxed. Like, he won't give them a break. And yeah. the water rates come and they're like, well, we can't do that. And Farah chases her down and, like, gives her her necklace and it's like, here. And she's like, oh, I'm indebted to you. And, like, Tamlin gets mad at her for that. And it's like, she's helping your citizens who, one, you don't even want to rule over. Like, you yeah. kind of hate it. If this is your responsibility, at least accept it and try to make 
the Supreme mm -hmm. Court better for everyone, mm -hmm. but you're just not, you're just yeah. asking them to pay. Then you find out Reese doesn't do that. Yeah. It's just like, I feel like uh, everything that Tamlin does, there's like the Reese example, and <laughs> yeah. you're just like, better. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think he taxes the citizens of, of the city, uh, yeah. but just like he just taxes them. And the thing about Tamlin is that he never wanted to be a ruler, so he's not that great at it. He's kind of a begrudging ruler. But Reese wanted to be a good ruler. He yeah. saw the type of ruler that his dad was and he wanted to be better than that. So he didn't just take up the mantle unwillingly. He really wanted to make life better for his people. And when you find out how much he sacrificed for them, yeah. for his people, and like there's a city in his night court that no one knows existed that's been kept secret for thousands of years and it's this wonderful beautiful place because cities don't really exist in their lands anymore. I just started crying when I thought about <laughs> all that he did to sacrifice for his people and then you just see Tamlin just being so awful. <laughs> and, so, and Lucian didn't do anything to help her. Yeah and he even comes back and he's like Tamlin's not himself. And Reese, I think, even says, like, if I was doing anything like Tamlin was doing to you, like, Adriel and Cassian would have taken you away. Yeah. They would have gotten you to safety, but Lucian wouldn't. The moment <laughs> when she decides to go off with Reese and I was so happy, because it happens around, like, 150 pages of, like, 624 pages. So it happens relatively early on, and I expected the whole bargain thing to be going on for longer, but I was so happy when she just left Tamlin. Yeah. I was like, yes, now we're with Reese forever. Yeah. <laughs> I also like that her going with Reese gave her the ability to heal, because if mm -hmm. she was just with Tamlin, that would oh, not yeah. happen. It was oh, not yeah. And not also happening. because Tamlin was not letting her explore any of her powers either. Yeah. He was just mm -hmm. like, no, we have to like lock you up. And yeah. like make sure no one else finds out about you and Reese is yeah. like, no, you have to train so that you know how to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Reese enables her, like he gives her the ability to make her own choices and to like become more powerful and Tamla just sort of like shuts her out and is like, no, you can't do this if I like, I just imagined him throwing her in a dungeon and locking her away so she can just rot. Yeah. And Reese doesn't do that. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like there's that line, what about being set free? I feel like I should explain, <laughs> I bookmark or I dog ear all my pages of the um, passages and quotes I really like, and this book is just every page all of them. <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, I couldn't oh, even do funny. that because, like, there'd just be so many. Okay, they're talking about Reese, and it's like, he, he dreams of what I breathed, of peace, of freedom, of a world united, a world thriving, of something better for all of us. He thinks he'll be remembered as the villain in the story, she snorted. But I forgot to tell him, I said quietly, opening the door that the villain is usually the person who locks up the maiden and throws away the key. Oh? I shrugged. He was the one who let me out. Yeah. I, I love them so much, and you couldn't tell. <laughs> I love their love story so much, and it was like a very slow burn from yeah. the beginning until like page 500 something where they realized they were mates and they consummated their relationship and they're gonna be getting yeah. together forever I like that it was kind of a slow development because she did have mm -hmm. to heal so if he yeah. threw that at her like yo You're my mate like she definitely would have freaked out Yeah, and then at the end when you find out that somehow like he'd been like seeing <laughs> visions of her I have double yeah. dog ears, which is a thing like I figured out how to do that So you can dog your two pages at once It's so great because you really do know that they're ma meant to be with each other like Reese's first lines to Feyre in Akatar, like, oh, there you are, like, I've been looking for you. He tells other people, like, thank you for helping me find her. Because he'd been having visions of her before they even met. He was ready to let her be with Tamlin if it made her happy, but when he saw how horrible it was, he couldn't, he couldn't let no. her die. He even said when he first gets back, after being under the mountain for 50 years and seeing more for the first time, he tells her, like, she's my mate. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I love all the other characters in this book too. The Court of Dreams. I, I yeah. love them. Like all the people who are just working to make this world a better place because there is the huge threat of the King of Highburn, which Tamlin is just ignoring until he decides to freaking team up with him and just <laughs> like sacrifices everyone in his court so that he can have Feyre who doesn't even want him. <sighs> I was so annoyed with Tamlin. <sighs> So bad. Words cannot describe how awful he was. I can't believe he sacrificed everyone to get her back. And mm -hmm. I appreciate earlier when, I think they're in the summer court, Reese asks Feyre, 
whether or not she would go back to Tamlin if war was like his way to get her back. She's mm -hmm. like, killing doesn't impress me. Mm -hmm. He does something so much worse because it will yeah. lead to war. No. He gave up everyone. Yeah. No, and, and Reese gave up himself so he could protect everyone in his land. Yeah. And Tamlin goes and does the opposite and sells everyone out so he can have the person that he wants, which is just completely selfish because she doesn't even want him. And it's so, I was so mad when you find out that Tamlin lied to Feyre about what happened between his family and Reese's family. It was a complete lie. He left out the fact that Tamlin and his family killed Reese's mom and sister. And so in retaliation, they went and killed Tamlin's family, which mm -hmm. I'm like, that's justified. Yeah. Tamlin's kind of but a jerk. But like, they had wings. They, the type of fairy they are, the Aurelians, they had wings. And they cut off Reese's mother's and sister's wings and like had them as trophies in the study at the spring court, which was just so horrible. It's like the Illyrian, that's their thing. Without their wings, they're, they kind of feel like they're nothing. Or at mm -hmm. least that's the sense they got. Yeah. Snow Cassian's wings are pretty broken yeah. at the yeah. end, but I have faith that it will heal. I really liked the ending. I, I remember I was just going through this book and I was like, oh yes, okay. Like, I have I have so much. I, I can do this. Like, I can read this slowly and it just keeps going and going and going. And I get to like this part and I'm like, there's nothing left. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, but I can't stop. And so, and then at the end it was finished and I was just like, no, 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 <laughs> like, what did I do? I wanted to immediately just turn to the front For, and, and start, just start over yeah. again. Sarah J. Moss totally tricked me into thinking that their mating bond was broken because I was like, there's no way, like, this can't be, they can't break that. But it's just their iron bond, so Ryan that's bond. okay. I really love the fact that her sisters became high fae too. <laughs> I was like, yes. yes. We totally ship Cassie and like, Nesta. The ships all alive. Yeah, Cassie and Nesta, <laughs> Mora and Azriel. I don't know about Amran. She's, she's kind of like, I just think she wants to get back to her yeah, other... But Lucian and Elaine. <laughs> yeah, which is funny. Fate is cruel. As long as it's not with Tamlin. Lucian, I feel like I can forgive. Tamlin should die alone. Yeah, I kind of hope he does die at the end of this next book. Yeah. Or maybe at the beginning. I feel like I've never had such a reversal from no. really liking a character in the first book to hating them so much in the second book. Because usually if, if someone decides to be with someone else, like the first person will annoy me. But I have just this fervent hatred in my heart for Tamlin. <laughs> it's like rage. Yeah. So I'm going back and reading the first book and it's so hard because I'm like, I hate you so much. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm like finding little things where I'm like, oh my god, he's not letting her choose here. He's doing this for her here. He's not doing this for her. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting to just go back and really close yeah. read that. Yeah. There, and there were a couple things that annoyed me about Tamlin in the first book. And I think as soon as Reese showed up, I was like, well, <laughs> it's him anyway, so bye bye Tamlin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish I'd seen it earlier. Oh, I love when- I mean, she was mad at Reese, but when he's like winnowing from like spot to spot and yeah. she's like trying to trace him until she finds yeah. the winnows. That's cute. And then when she saves Reese, I mean, this is right before she finds out from the serial that he's her mate, but she just like does everything she can to save him. Okay, I was spoiled. I definitely knew about the mating bond beforehand, but that did not ruin my, my experience reading this book. But it was interesting doing that because as you're reading through, there are a lot of points where it's, you can, if you know it's a mating bond, you know like that's the reason that something's happening. There are parts she's like, oh, this bond does this or this. And it's like, well, that's not actually your bargain bond. That's it's your mating, mating bond. bond. There are a lot of things that happen, like Reese's expressions. Mm -hmm. that I was like, oh my God, that's because they're mated. Like it yeah. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, I totally knew that too because at the end of the first book when he sees her when she's like high fae for the first time and he kind of like stumbles back, I was like, mating bond! Like that, that was, was like, and so I was just like waiting for validation when it finally came. I was like, yes. So I also like that even though she was annoyed at him, like angry at him that he didn't tell her, it didn't take too long for her to get over it. Yeah. One of my worst pet peeves is when main characters just take forever to get over something mm -hmm. for the plot to progress. It's like, come on, like, yeah, come on. I think Farah's really rational for the most part. Like, she does react really strongly to things. Like, obviously, finding out that she was Reese's mate, she was like super mad. Like, why wouldn't you tell me? Whatever. Which I think is understandable. Like, I'd probably mm -hmm. be pretty mad too. But she, when she's thinking it through in the cabin, like she comes to yeah. an understanding about it really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like after a day. Yeah, and she she's like, okay, that. I think there's even a line that's like, okay, I understand. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I appreciate that she actually thinks through her, like she thinks through a lot of her decisions and it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And she also is more willing to like understand things that other people do. And that's, 
hard to find I think with a lot of characters. I really liked the end of this book. It was really sad obviously when they were caught by the King of Highburn but I think they played it off really well and I like that Feyre tricked Tamlin and the King of Highburn and made the King of Highburn think that he could strip them of their mating bond, which he couldn't do. Like, no. there's no way he could do that. Uh -uh. No. But I just thought it was so funny when she like went off with Tamlin and Lucian totally no. knows that she's lying, but she's like, what are you gonna do? Like, yeah. you're mated with my sister and they have her. Like, what are you gonna do? Yeah. There was one quote. I have to read it. It's probably like one of my favorite quotes that I've read in a long time. Like, I would totally get this tattooed on my body. That's how strongly <laughs> I feel about this. I knew it exactly what you were talking about because so I was like I just want to paint it on like all of my walls. Yeah, but I met his stare as I clicked my glass against his, the crystal ringing clear and bright over the crashing sea far below and said to the people who look at the stars and wish Reese, he picked up his glass, his, ga his gaze so piercing that I wondered why I bothered blushing at all for Tarquin. Reese clicked his glass against mine to the stars who listen in the dreams that are answered. It's just like so beautiful and I, I'm stealing this thought off Tumblr. But um, I was reading something and they said he literally, like, his dreams were literally answered because he was dreaming about Feyre. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> and I really like that they're in the night court where it's not perpetual night, by the way, but yeah. they're really beautiful nights and I like, like, the, the stars, stars and yeah. dreams and it's really beautiful. The yeah. entire time it's really beautiful. I also like their wings. Like, I would totally fly if I could. That'd be, it's like, a dream that's completely unattainable. Mm -hmm. I mean like with wings by your own, not like in an airplane. And I love when he, whenever like Reese wraps his wings around her, I'm just like, oh, oh. Also when she started glowing because yeah. she was so happy in the bathtub, I was like, this is like Stardust feels from the movie if you've seen yeah. it. Also the book by Neil Gaiman. Oh, it's just so good. I want to read this all over again now. Oh. This is a book that's been like in my bed at night. <laughs> when I go to sleep. I totally like yeah. slept with the first book when I read it last year because I was like this is so magical and then this book too like, like even better. Even better. Yeah. I don't know. I can't believe I have to wait a year. Yeah. We have to wait a year for the third yeah, book. No. Like one of our roommates was like well why don't you just wait a while until you read it and I was like you don't understand. <laughs> Like, uh, no. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I think that's all I want to say. Otherwise, I'm just going to go through, like, page by page and just talk about, like, how I, much I love it. I would totally go in depth and talk about all the characters. I think it'd be super cool to post read this. <laughs> Rereading it again, like, having a journal and then going through and just talking about, like, specific characters. Yeah. But there's just not the time. There's this one shelf in my mind that has, like, my favorite series. And so far, it's only been two. It's been Infernal Devices and Daughter of Smoke and Bone. This was immediately put on there. The first book was so... So good and I was like I consider this a favorite but I don't know but then I read this and I was, I was like, like this series has so been bumped good. up like it's I don't like, it's it's so good now I feel bad because every book I read after this is gonna just like, I know it's like, like there's person. just been like the book slump and like the taint when you're like it's not as good yeah <laughs> you're like, like where's Reese I hope rereading fixes that it probably mm -hmm. won't it'll probably make it worse <laughs> yeah <laughs> this was a really good book we'd highly recommend it yeah and if you haven't read this book you should if you had read this book please comment below and let us know that we're not like just crazy yeah. and fangirling over it. We've probably been talking about this for at least half an hour. We would love to talk about this book with other people. Really Trust would. us, we would. <laughs> yeah, it's been like one of the main topics of conversation between us for the past couple yeah. of weeks. Like I definitely once in a while I like do something and I'm like Reese, and then I'll start talking about this. And then for like half an hour, book. and you'll just be like. <sighs> Did you say you sat in bed one morning just like thinking about the book for an hour? <laughs> it's that kind of book. So all of our social media accounts are listed below in the description. It's so good. Yeah. Just, that's all I'm going to say. Just that's, read it. That's all we have to say. Until next time. <laughs> bye. bye. There are certain times where I start talking about the book and there are tears. I don't know where they came from, but they're there. Yeah, just read it. Please read it if you haven't. I don't know why. I, I guess you've been spoiled now. If you haven't, I don't know why we said that. I don't know. I feel like Kelly would watch to the end of this without reading it.